cats. They come in many different shapes and sizes. Kitty cat. Some are small, some fluffy, and some are vacuum sealed inside a walrus's nutsack. But one thing they seem to have in common is very average intelligence. Or so I thought until this one. Has this cat actually worked out how to defeat the water spray cat repellent? Now, you may already know the backstory. The neighbor's cats like to urinate on my car. I've talked about cars and cats a lot in past videos and in life in general, to the point where my voice to text on my phone has given up trying to understand me whether I'm talking about cars or cats. It could be my accent, but some of the results it gives me are things like how to paint your cat, issues with my cat's engine oil, and I like this one, how do I stop my neighbor's car from shitting in my garden? So yeah, cats invade my backyard frequently and they cause all sorts of havoc, like scratching stuff and, and looking at my things, which I hate, but the weeing on things is bad. Also what got worse was a family of birds set up a nest in a terrible location where the cats frequently go. In an attempt to allow the birds to survive until adulthood, I took it upon myself to set up a motion activated cat repellent to keep these introduced beasts away and allow the birds to grow up to become adult birds. The motion activated cat repellent I actually show you how to make in another video. Many cats came and were repelled away and then some came back again and then were repelled away again then they forgot that that happened and they came back again and that just kind of kept happening. But the birds survived to adulthood which was good but during the progress of filming there was one cat that I thought had earned his own dedicated video. Now you're probably wondering where this falls into our cat story. Well, we had Undersniffer, he had just made his second return visit, and White Mo had been sprayed in the face. And the birds were just generally hanging out, doing bird things like in their nest and making their mum clean it up, and being birds. So that's just a little bit of backstory for you. If you're new here, let's get into it. It looks like we have a brand new visitor to the cat repellent setup. She struts in quite confidently, like another regular who tears up native wildlife in the backyard. Except at this point though, where her walking style looks suspiciously like one of those Boston Dynamics robot dogs. Well, hang on, she's a little bit suspicious that the gate is open. Yeah, why don't you just close the gate? Look, I've answered this before, but the cats have already cleared a large fence to get to this fence line, and they normally just jump at two, which claws up the car paint and fence. Anyway, where were we? Our uninvited guest checks the most recent visitor book entries with a traditional sniff of the gate. Then she reads the signs. Wildlife buffet this way, toilet that way, other toilet that direction. Then she wanders on in. Now, what happens next may come as a bit of a surprise to you if you're a cat, because everything's a surprise to you. A broom falls over and you think the world's ending. She approaches, it's an absolute drenching, and sends her sprinting for the backyard. Looking at the still photos, the first frame has fired before our light globe filaments have warmed to full brightness. But we can just see our new friend crossing the infrared sensor's sights, and our water jet is on its way to give a big liquid butt slap. And it has made good clean contact, erasing her back legs and sending her into a bit of a tailspin. Like a high speed lens, her pupils have opened up to f1.0 in cat optics. Meanwhile, the overall expression on her face doesn't seem too concerned. Really, this must be the most complacent deadpan look I've ever seen on a cat's face that's just been sprayed in the butt with water. She's just thinking about her plans tomorrow. Hmm, if my humans serve me biscuits again tomorrow morning, I'm going to pull them out of the bowl and eat them on the floor next to it. Yeah, cat lick all over their clean tiles will teach them. And still, even on our next frame, Deadpan has her body desperately evading the situation while her face is just going, yeah. The owners of this place really need to pressure wash the algae on this concrete or something. This place smells like an old fish tank. Hey, is that cat claw marks? She then lands and gets her claws firmly embedded in the concrete, at the same time pretending to hold an imaginary ball. Once I caught a fish that was this big, I just want to give the bird a friendly cuddle. Or maybe, she'll fly one day, and then she's doing walk like an Egyptian. Looking back at our video footage, she's making some quick decisions about her situation. She heads to the right, spots the cat dome of shame, then she darts to the left. Her butt tags it as she goes past. However, she knows this isn't the way home. 
the photography lights turn off. Okay, pause the video. It's cat battleship time. Select the squares containing cats. Leave your answer in the comments. Activate laser eyes in three, two, one. There she is, pretending to be a rock. She is a little close to our wild bird nest here, but her attention is firmly on trying to work out what the hell just happened and finding a way home. So the birds are pretty safe. A couple of minutes have passed and she's still assessing the situation. Having trouble seeing anything through the garden, she slowly makes her way over to find a better position to work out what type of enemy she's dealing with. Deadpan is moving so slowly, I've had to cut the video, but out of interest, Based on the time code of the clip and the distance she moves, she's traveling at 0.06 kilometers per hour or 0.03 miles per hour, which is slightly above snail's pace. She finally arrives at her destination. Maybe standing up here will help. Nah, still can't see the gate. Moving at two paws per hour, she makes her way down into a clearing. She knows there's something down there, but she doesn't know what it is. She's like, maybe I can use this brick somehow. That's it. Bricks are used to make houses. A house is what's in my way. Maybe something, 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 something. Some, some. Unfortunately, Deadpan's cat processing power has maxed out. After sitting for several minutes, glancing at the shit ton of alternative escape options, she crouches down at the fence for a better view and can finally see something. She doesn't know what it is, but all she does know is she has to pass through the gate in order to get home and save Fantasia. So yeah, five minutes has now passed. She's still sitting there at the fence, looking at the Sphinx gate. So here's a little fact while we're waiting. Apparently, if you have more than one Sphinx, you have Sphinges or Sphinges, depending on how you pronounce it. One Sphinx, many Sphinges. Try using it in a sentence. Hey mate, what'd you get up to today? Oh, I was watching a video on YouTube about a cat standing at a fence and learnt about sphinges. She's been sitting at the fence for 10 minutes now. It's been the longest 10 minutes of her life. She's tried looking at the gate in various ways, including up high, in the middle, down low, and then up high again. Also to the left, the right, with one eye, and with two. But she keeps reaching the same conclusion, that she's out of luck. Amazingly, 20 minutes has now passed, and she's finally decided to make a move. She does a laser scan of the gaps between the bars to work out the best way in, and she slowly steps through. She double checks that her ass is following her too. It is. She reassesses the side fence option. It's not looking good. There's definitely only one way through, via the friendly looking glowing Sphinx gate with boobies. But she has a plan. Maybe if I just go super slow and pretend to be a cat, nothing will hurt me. I just need to be confident. But still, what attacked me? Was it something in the garden? Is there a cucumber hiding around the corner? She keeps advancing forward. Maybe it was that basketball. Could have been a bird in that Avery. No. It must be these big weird booby creatures. Now her slow motion approach is actually a pretty solid idea. Is this cat going to outsmart the motion sensor? She's having doubts. She's thinking, oh man, I'm pretty sure I crapped myself right about here. Yep, that smell is definitely poo molecules. Huh? Oh no! Don't start to doubt yourself! Be confident! Be confident! Be confident! She's onto us. She's worked out that the water puddle has something to do with it. The exit is within a pause reach. Is she actually gonna make it? No, it looks like it sprayed her in the face and she's flown off to kitty heaven. Nah, it's just water. 
Now, it may be a little hard to tell what just happened. Let's take a look at our other angle. She cautiously approaches the gate. But there's something waiting for her she completely wasn't prepared for. Gravity rotation. This has sent her tumbling through the gate, accelerating to terminal velocity, and then she's fallen off the edge of the planet. She is now stuck in a permanent low Earth orbit. You can spot her just after sunset on a clear evening. Alright, let's break down the video replay. Her slow motion approach was pretty impressive, however it wasn't slow enough to avoid the sensor. The initial spray has washed her whiskers. She's retreated slightly, then on this next frame we can see she's got a full cartoon style eye pop going on. She is used to jumping the gate and it looks like old habits die hard. She has launched for the top, also because the best option is always up. Like for my technique for changing bed sheets under a ceiling fan. Deadpan has made contact with the gate. And check out her toes here. I am pretty confident we are witnessing the kangaroo mode adaptation taking shape. Look at it! And then this next frame is quite impressive. She gives us the old cat brown eye. She's both defying gravity and her existence as a four-legged creature by standing on a wall sideways on her rear legs. After the double bounce off the backboard, she's through the hoop. She lands it and sprints off behind the car. Probably the fastest I've ever seen any of the cats leave the yard. Looking at the first of our still images, the cat repellent is sending a watery eviction notice. She studies it closely, trying to decide whether scratching it is a viable option. This also gives us another close look at the toe adaptation taking place. On the next frame, it looks like she's decided against the water scratch strategy. She's tucked her arms into her pouch and instantly retracted her body into a dual poo squat. Looks like it may have been a false alarm. Or she could also be considering a penguin belly slide under the water stream. Nope, her arms have regrown. She's using her tail as a ruler and sizing up the gap under. It's not looking good. She is assessing her next best option, which is of course attempting to jump the entire gate rather than doing a small hop over the water stream. She has launched. We also have some confirmation with the water droplets that the spray has made contact. It's mild at best, but between the spray noise, the camera firing, and the thousand watts of light that switched on out of nowhere, I think we've sent a pretty good message to modify Deadpan's behaviour. On the next frame, she is coming in for a landing, and it's about this point where she's probably thinking, what the f did I jump so high for? She has landed on the gate. As an idea, this makes me wonder if you can buy cat compatible Velcro, nail some sheets to the gate, peel off a collection of cats in the morning. Deadpan then utilises her tail to brace the other side of the gate. And then what the f*** are we seeing here? I was assuming cat butt, but why is it all shiny? Is this normal? This is disturbing. So what I think this might be is a third cat eyeball that us humans don't know about. Like a reversing camera for your cat. Maybe it explains how they always land on their feet. Their ass eye serves as a ground proximity sensor, like on a drone. I better update the Wikipedia page on cats. Then finally, she descends back down to Earth. And with that, we can now add Deadpan to the kitty wall of shame. I'll put him just here, next to White Mo. My kitties. My kitty collection is almost complete. So how's the cat situation? At the moment, it has lowered a little bit. Rat numbers are currently up. And no, it's not related to the cats. The cats never go for the rats. I've said this before. Why would they when they can just eat birds and stuff out there? It sucks. It would be great if they did. I'll be addressing that in a future video coming up soon. The birds are doing well. I don't know about Drogzy and Raza. I can't ID them anymore. I think they've found their own territory or moved away. The parents I can still recognize and they had three more chicks, which all survived to adulthood. They live higher in the trees, which is good. As for other updates, over the holiday period, Kristen and I made some solid progress on optimizing the shed to allow for some more frequent videos. I've made a separate video about that on my second channel, which you can check out if you like. I'm gonna do more casual but frequent videos on there. If it's your thing, subscribe. I'm still gonna give away some of the prototypes of the sprayer. Just leave a comment, make sure you're subscribed. No cheating, you gotta be subscribed. Also, I forgot to mention, if you want to build your own cat repellent, apart from the how-to video, you're better off to grab the ebook I've put together. This has easy step-by-step -step instructions and covers more than the video, including the problems you may face with setting it up. But for me, currently it looks like the cat thread is now gone, so I can safely move on to finishing some other videos for you guys to enjoy.